Player Profiler Posse. Hilo here, bringing you three must-draft best ball stacks for 2023. <laughs> because you must! Now, before we jump into this, we do have to say all the stats that are going to be discussed today are pulled directly from playerprofiler.com. So head on over to playerprofiler.com and get inside scoop to the best tools in the business. Starting us off here, our first must-draft best ball stack in 2023, Russell Wilson, Jerry Judy, and Marvin Mims. You might be thinking, Hilo, what gives, dude? These Denver Broncos rank dead last in the league in scoring in 2022. And you'd be right. They were terrible. But what has changed in Denver? New head coach Sean Payton comes out of retirement to unite with Russell Wilson. He can fix them, or so we hope. And we get offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi coming over to reunite with head coach Sean Payton. Now, via the early Vegas lines that are released on win totals on projected points, we are expecting a 35% increase to the scoring for these Denver Broncos in 2023. And the last time Sean Payton and Joe Lombardi coached together, they did so for five years in New Orleans, they finished fifth or better in points scored per game in all five of those seasons spent together in New Orleans. Now, Russell Wilson is coming off his worst statistical season as a professional. He held a lowly 60.5% completion rate. He tossed only 16 touchdowns. He passed for only 3,524 yards. But again, what has changed? Now look at what this team has done this offseason. Sean Payton and Joe Lombardi traded up into the second round to select Marvin Mims with the last pick of the second round in this year's NFL draft. And this was the first offensive selection by the new coaching regime. Let's look at some other previous wide receivers selected by Sean Payton in his tenure in New Orleans. Guys by the name of Marquise Colston, Brandon Cooks, Michael Thomas, Robert Meacham, Kenny Stills, and Traquan Smith. Now you've got a nice little mix of barn burners. You've got a nice little mix of wide receiver ones and wide receiver twos and wide receiver threes. But the point is, these guys typically don't miss when selecting wide receivers in the draft. Now what does Mims bring to this team? Mims brings blazing 4.38 speed and an elite 20.1 yards per collegiate reception. And he fits perfectly into what this offense has sorely been missing. This downfield role type guy. This safety manipulator. This Z type wide receiver. We expect Mims to eventually start seeing some snaps at the Z in this offense. Because what does this offense have? Outside of Jerry Judy, they don't have that vertical field stretcher type player. They have a guy in Cortland Sutton who's established in that X type wide receiver role. He's running those outs. He's running those ball control type routes. They've had to utilize Jerry Judy in that Z-type wide receiver role. His slot snap rate dropped from a robust 66% in 2021, which is more in line with what we would think to see out of a Y or a slot type wide receiver. That number dropped all the way down to 39.3% in 2022. So what I expect from this offense is to get Mims on the field in that Z type, that downfield role, running those corners, those posts, those go routes, the seven to nine routes is what we need from these Denver Broncos. And Marvin Mims fits that to a T. Best part about this three person stack, Russell Wilson is currently off the board as the quarterback 18. Jerry Judy, a very comfortable wide receiver 20 and Marvin Mims all the way down at wide receiver 70, giving us that nice rookie discount. This is one of your late season potential hammer stacks for 2023. Go draft them. The second must draft best ball stack for 2023 is Daniel Jones, Darren Waller, and Darius Slayton. You see it again, another downfield type wide receiver, a Z type wide receiver, a safety manipulator running the seven to nines. That's what we like. We want them on the field. We want them running high value routes. Looking at these giants in the first year with Brian Dable, the New York football giants ranked 18th in points per game in 2022, right in the middle of the pack. And that was at 21.2 points per game. But they ranked fifth in the league in red zone touchdown rate at 64.81%. These guys, when they made it into the red zone, they were scoring touchdowns. That's what we like to see. They also ranked 12th in drive success rate a season ago. And what did they do this offseason? 
they went out and got their red zone threat in tight end Darren Waller. Looking at Darren Waller's red zone target rates over the previous three seasons, elite. In 2022, he held a 21.3% red zone target rate, and that was the lowest over the previous three seasons. In 2021, he held a robust 28.8% red zone target rate. And in 2020, three seasons ago, an absolutely bonkers absurd 34.8% red zone target rate. So this is the guy we expect to lead the team in red zone looks in 2023. So we have an offense that scores the football when they get in the red zone, and they have this brand new shiny toy to utilize in the red zone. What about Darius Slayton? Darius Slayton somewhat quietly led the team in snaps at the wide receiver position in 2022, while missing one game and playing only a handful of snaps in two others. So he did so in basically, effectively, 14 games played. He held a fairly significant 12.5 average depth of target, which ranked 24th in the league. His yards per route run was a healthy 2.10, which again ranked 24th in the league. But now looking at his yards per target and his yards per reception, now we're talking 10.2 yards per target. That ranked 5th in the league. 15.7 yards per reception. That ranked 10th in the league a season ago. Now I get the uncertainty regarding the draft selection of Jalen Hyatt, but who is Jalen Hyatt? This is a rookie wide receiver who has already missed time in OTAs, and he has been called out and singled out by his coaching staff for both a lack of focus and a lack of motivation. That is not what we want to be hearing out of a rookie wide receiver. So I expect Darius Slayton to once again assert dominance over the snaps on this team in an established role and bringing that veteran presence. He is also, oh by the way, the downfield guy working those high value routes. So your second must draft best ball stack for 2023 is Daniel Jones, Darren Waller, and Darius Slayton. Moving on to your third must draft best ball stack for 2023. We're moving to Detroit in Jared Goff, Jameer Gibbs, and Jamison Williams. Hilo, dude, where is Amon Ross St. Brown? You don't need me telling you to draft Amon Ross St. Brown. Go draft him. Get Amon Ross St. Brown. But what do we have in Jameer Gibbs and Jamison Williams? Both of these guys were drafted in the first rounds in back-to-back -back NFL drafts under the current coaching regime. So these were their guys. They went out and got them. Head coach Dan Campbell and offensive coordinator Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson is entering his second season with the team. What did the Lions do a season ago? They ranked 12th in the league in pass attempts per game at 34.6. What about their pace of play? Now, pace of play is relatively not sticky year over year, but when we start to see significant trends like we're about to talk about, you can start making some conclusions about what they want to do when they've got the football. In 2022, they ranked 10th in first half pace of play. I like to bias my analysis on pace of play towards that first half pace of play number, because that we have less influence for outside factors, such as the game environment, how many points the opposition is able to put up. But looking at the rest of their pace of play numbers, they also ranked 11th in second half pace of play in 2022, 6th in pace of play with a lead of seven or more points. That tells me that they are still looking to go score the football, even if they're playing with a lead. And they ranked seventh in situational neutral pace of play in 2022. Who is Jameson Williams? We haven't seen a lot of him at the professional level. This is a guy who brings 4.3040 speed, and he fits that prototypical Z-type wide receiver build. This dude is going to be working downfield when he sees the field. Again, late season hammer here. We know his suspension is looming. Now, Jared Goff has taken a lot of heat over the previous few seasons as non-elite, mid, however you want to describe it. But looking at what he did last season, he ranked seventh in deep ball completion rate at a healthy 44.4%. He ranked fourth in deep field accuracy rating at 8.0. Yes, I will concede he has struggled mightily over his career when he is under pressure. And that was no different in 2022. He held a very, very low 28.2% completion rate when under pressure. That ranked outside of all starters in the league at 33rd in the league. But... Continuing to look at the team as a whole, what do the Lions bring to the table? They have a bona fide, on-paper, top-five offensive line entering 2023. 
where most places you look, they are ranked in the top three in offensive line. So we can expect Jared Goff to have some time to throw, which mitigates some of the concerns of how poor he is when under pressure. Again, this is another late season potential hammer stack for the playoff rounds in best ball contests. So there you have it. There's your three must draft best ball stacks for 2023. In Denver, we've got Russell Wilson, Jerry Judy, and Marvin Mims. In New York, we've got Daniel Jones, Darren Waller, and Darius Slayton. And in Detroit, we've got Jared Goff, Jameer Gibbs, and Jamison Williams. I am Hilo. You know where to find me. Player Profiler Posse, I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.